guys, Literary Prepper back again. Uh, we're in the kitchen today, as you can see. Um, and before we actually jump into our video, I want to start with making a little beverage. Um, now, I've already got my own coffee, um, but my tomatoes are in fruit at the moment, which is very, very exciting. So we're going to be making a drink for them. Now, a lot of people can use uh, coffee grounds or you know, if you're outside and you're drinking your coffee and you decide you're done with it, you can just throw your coffee on your um, tomato plants and many of your other plants. Um, as long as they're not sort of um, really, really alkaline loving plants, if they don't mind a little bit of soil acidity, just chuck your coffee or your coffee grounds on your plants and um, it will actually give the uh, soil a bit of a nitrogen boost. Nitro whoop, that's my oven, sorry. Um, nitrogen promotes plant growth. So if you want really you know, green, leafy um, plants, then you want to sort of encourage a whole heap of nitrogen in the soil. Right now is not what we want to be doing with um, the tomatoes because if you have too much nitrogen when you're like trying to encourage flower or fruit growth, um, what you'll wind up with is a very, very leafy plant and a lesser crop. Um, what you want to be doing around the time that you're trying to encourage flowering or plant uh, or fruit growth is um, actually bumping up the potassium levels. So um, right now I won't be putting any coffee on the garden, but I will be making, as I said, a, um, a tea for my tomatoes. So um, where are we? We're going to be using chamomile. Um, now, I'm not encouraging any particular brand. This just happens to be the brand that we had kicking around. Um, I'm not sure we actually bought this. I tend to inherit a lot of teas that people buy and then decide that they don't want or they've had in their cupboard for a very long time and they go, actually, I don't want to drink these. Here, have some tea. So um, we're going to be using this with our tomatoes. So. I'm going to be using three, so three into there. Get the right burner, always helps, and. Uh, Put some water in with these guys. And we will just let them simmer away and, um, you know, brew and do their, you know, tea thing. Um, so why are we using chamomile on the tomatoes? Um, chamomile is another one of those teas that, you know, it's really good as a sort of fertilizing type thing for the plants. The tomatoes love it. Um, do not make it too strong because if it's too strong, then, you know, they won't like it and you might kill them. Um, or at least, you know, affect them to the point where they won't perform as well as you want them to. So don't sort of go overboard with the teas. You want it to still be, you know, relatively watery. Um, if you can drink it yourself and it's palatable, use it. Um, if you can drink it yourself and it's a little bit weak, use it. If you don't like the taste, um, not because you don't like chamomile, but because you've you know, made it too strong, don't use it or water it down. Um, so chamomile is also one of those brilliant things that if you pour it onto the um, soil, just like you, know, you would when you're normally watering your plant, then um, that can also keep away some of the nasty things that you don't want getting into your tomatoes. Now, the reason I'm making this video today is because, as I said, my tomatoes are fruiting. And um, I went out yesterday and I found one of these. So it's got caterpillar holes in it. This one actually had a caterpillar in it yesterday. Um, I did not evict the caterpillar, I simply picked this off and put it on the ground and he went away. Um, but yeah, that's what happens when grubs get into your tomatoes, uh, which is not what I want because I'm growing them for me, not for the bugs. So, um, you know, that's, yeah, obviously less than ideal. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to make up a spray. So what I've done is uh, for this you're going to need a separate pot and you're going to need some olive oil. Again, always buy Australian. If you want extra virgin olive oil, always buy Australian. Olive oil is one of those things that has a short shelf life. It goes rancid really quickly. So if you buy foreign um, olive oil, then you know, you're know you looking, it might be cheaper, but you're looking at a lesser shelf life because it's been in transit for so long. So you know, buy olive oil, buy good quality olive oil. This is one of those things that you shouldn't be cheaping out on. Um, I like Cobram Estate. Um, there's a few other really good Australian brands out there that you can get a hold of as well. But um, yeah, buy, buy decent olive oil. Um, you'll also be needing a tiny amount of soap. I usually use um, Lux Flakes, but I can't actually find my box at the moment. We've been rearranging a few bits and pieces, so I'm just going to use a little bit of dish soap. Um, and then you're going to need some water and a spray bottle as well as some garlic cloves. Now I've pre-shelled these because watching me peel garlic is not exciting. So I've just got three fairly large garlic cloves here. I just wanted to show you this little guy. So I've cut his top off, but you can see his, you know, the you know, base of it has started to go mouldy. It looks like it's tried to send out a little shoot and, you know, it's failed. So, um, normally uh, I would probably, if I was going to cook with this, I would at least cut it down, you know, to their sort of thing. I would probably rethink using this, you know, for cooking myself if I had, like, more garlic bulbs left over because Mold is one of those things you really don't want to be messing around with. For people who have things like cheese and just cut off the moldy bits, uh, that's all bread, um, that's really not good enough because the spores that you can't see are still within that food. So when it comes to mold, I get really, I don't like to mess with mold because mold can make you really, really sick. However, I'm not going to be eating this. This is going to be a, uh, a garden spray, so I don't care. I'm going to use this. I'm going to get my crappy little knife over here. Um, again, another thing that we kind of inherited from someone who was clearing out stuff, so I just use these as multi-purpose knives for doing things I don't want to use my good knives on. And in no particular sort of... Um, fashion or whatever. We're just going to cut these up into bits. So as you can see, not getting too fancy about it all, just enough so that the oils can come out. Now you never want to throw a whole clove of garlic in with anything that you're cooking um, because if you don't crush it and if you don't cut it or mince it then um, you're not really releasing the you know, juices and you're not using it to the best of its um, potential sort of thing. So always either crush it or cut it or mince it or something like that. One more. Oh, two more. There we go. Okay. So we've got our garlic in our pot. Bring on the olive oil. And you just want to really liberally kind of drain it in. There wasn't a whole lot left in this bottle, so I'm just going to use what was left in the bottle. Um, the, oh, sorry. So the garlic, um, the smell of it and just little um, juices and enzymes that the garlic gives off, um, the bugs really don't like. So the smell of the garlic is going to keep the bugs away. The oil um, is, you know, basically coats it so it gives um, like 
the garlic juices and whatnot something to actually bind to so that um, you can yeah um, have actually something to spray on rather than just trying to crush down a whole heap of pure garlic juice and I'm having total mental blank today um, with anything uh, that has soap in it as an added ingredient when you're looking at sprays it works kind of like an adhesive I can't remember the exact name for it it starts with S but um, it, it stops the oil from just running off the plants so um, it works as kind of like a binding agent so another um, really cool little thing that you can do that I've done before if you want a mild herbicide if you've got some um, you know grass that's you know getting a little bit out of control if you've got some specific weeds that um, you want to target or whatever you can get some vinegar pop that in a spray bottle with a little bit of soap and um, just you know mix that up and spray that on whatever the offending plant is and um, that's you know a very easy and sort of eco-friendly way of you know making your own herbicide um, it doesn't work on all plants sometimes you need to go back you know say within half an hour and um, give them another hit just to make sure that they're well and truly soaked but the vinegar is so acidic that it will kill most soft leaf plants so anything as I said like grasses or you know, common weeds or anything like that then um, you know most things that you would find to be an embuggerance in the garden the problem is that you've got to watch with overspray so that you don't spray vinegar onto the plants that you want to keep um, you don't want to do it before it rains because um, you know obviously if you do it immediately before it rains then it'll get washed off you don't want a concentration of vinegar in your soil because again that will get absorbed by the plants that you want to keep so now that that's you know just the garlic and the olive oil make sure we get the right burner this time and we're just going to pop that on and let that fry up I'll actually just pause this for two seconds because it takes a little while to heat up but we're just going to simmer that down you don't want it to burn once it starts to get sort of a little bit golden then um, you sort of want to take it off the heat if you don't want the smell of garlic to waft through the house and you know you don't want to sort of cook it down this way you can cut up your garlic and leave it in your olive oil and um, just leave it on the counter with a cover over it you leave it there for a day or two and the um, garlic will slowly seep into the oil so that's another way that you can do it I'm impatient so I'm going to cook mine and um, I will let this sort of brown up and then we'll come back to it okay so that has um, been doing its thing for a few minutes so I will see if I can get the camera and come over so I've probably let that brown just a smidge too much but it doesn't matter sorry that doesn't matter um, so what we're going to do now is move that out of the way I'm just get a normal bowl and got a metal sieve don't use plastic unless your um, uh, oil has completely cooled otherwise you'll melt it so we're just going to grab the garlic and oil mix here I'm just going to drain it gently through the sieve you don't want to be doing anything too quickly because you don't want it to splash on you um, even if it's cool you really don't want to be covered in oil because it's gross right. so pop that to one side we didn't get a lot of oil out of it as I said because I was just using the um, remnants of the bottle that I had I would normally make um, I would say probably about 200 ml of oil I like to make this in a big container so I don't have to do it on like a regular basis so I would normally do between 100 and 200 mils of oil um, and I would probably water that down to maybe um, you know 
if you're using say 200 mils of oil then I would probably want to use maybe 200 or 300 mils of water with a little bit of soap in there um, you don't want it to be too strong because again you will kill your plants um, but you don't want it to be too thin that it doesn't actually do anything so I've got my bottle here and I've put 300 mils of water in here already and I'm just going to grab my soap and just put just a tiny amount in there so maybe like two or three drops of soap in there if I was using Lux Flakes I would just use like a pinch of Lux Flakes if you are using a Lux Flakes then make sure that you use the majority of what you're going to spray um, either that day or within a couple of days because if you don't um, you'll wind up with a garlicky slime that is impossible to spray. Um, fun to play with but um, no, you'll wind up with slime in a bottle. So we're going to grab our funnel. Yes I know it's plastic but you get that. And grab our oil. Again, gently just sort of now if you don't have a sieve then you can sort of just use a fork to train the um, big chunky bits out of the mixture um, it just the big chunky bits kind of even if you just leave the shells in there they get clogged in the spray and um, yeah, that's a completely different sort of environment when you're looking at that. So you can sort of see there, because water and oil are immiscible, which means they don't mix. Um, so you're looking at your water, your oil with a little bit of soap on top, swish it around a little bit, let that combine really well before you spray it. My nozzle is over there, so I'm not gonna screw it on right now, but that's pretty much all you have to do and then from here you just take it out spray it liberally on your plants and make sure you cover all of the surfaces and um, you know obviously if it's going to rain then wait until it stopped raining because it will get washed off and you'll have to start again but um, that's pretty much all I do and that will get rid of um, pretty much anything that will attack your tomatoes if you do this on a regular basis then um, you should wind up with a really healthy crop of tomatoes. Um, I haven't I haven't really tried it on too many other things but things like chilies, um, other nightshade kind of plants that sort of you know, works for them as well. Um, the other thing that I like to do if you don't have any garlic on hand you can make a similar sort of mix with lemons but again remember that it's a little bit acidic so just you know, watch how heavy handed you are with using things like lemons and chilies, but they're another option. Um, and of course, if you have things like nutmeg or um, powdered chili lying around, then you can shake those over the soil around the base of the plants and that will work. Um, I use nutmeg to keep people's cats off my garden and that seems to work really well. But um, yeah, that obviously, you know, it won't really go off. Um, if you are planning to use it, you'll probably use it before it goes off. And yeah, it's, um, as I said, really good for getting rid of all sorts of you know, nasties. Um, I've even tried spraying it. I wouldn't spray it on flowering plants because it can kind of clag up the um, you know bits that are involved in the pollination process. But um, I've tried spraying that on other plants where I've had grasshoppers and locusts try to get into it and it works on ornamental plants as well. So have fun with that one guys. Um, over in the back here we've got our tea which is cooling down. So when that is you know, sort of cool to the touch then I will probably add, so there was a litre of water went in there to start with, I'll probably add maybe another half litre just to sort of dilute it. A little bit so that it's not too strong for my plants and then that will go in a watering can and I'll just water the base of the tomatoes as I would normally when just watering them in general so 
couple of tips on how you can avoid spending money on all sorts of nasty chemicals that are going to do God knows what to your soil and your plants. Um, the only thing that you need to do is when it comes time to actually picking the you know fruit or veggies that you've sprayed, obviously they're going to be covered in soap and oil, so you want to give them a bit of a wash before you eat them, unless you want to be tasting soapy tomatoes. So um, have fun experimenting with that and you know make it as concentrated or as diluted as you <laughs> as you feel would suit your plants. And um, if you found this useful, like, share, subscribe, feel free to comment below with anything similar that you guys have or your successes or failures with these particular mixes. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye.